Here they come. Good. High ball freight, number 56. Block. Entire line. Impassable. Hold all things. Get me Dan Thorne. Red board all along the main line. Oh, why don't somebody get me Dan Thorne? He's the only man can handle this. I'm trying to get him, trying to get him. Half my paperwork ruined again because he's out tramping the yard when he should be here to give me authority. What's coming off around here? If you guys play railroad anymore today, there's a landslide, a new cut. The entire division is held I up like the peak of traffic. My schedule's all ripped to pieces. We've had to hold up the limited. Hold up the Olympian? Are you off your nut? Tell her to come through. Well, uh, half a mountain is slid on that track. I'll clear the track. Don't stand there looking at me. Lift those red boards and keep traffic moving. Go. Last the bar room to blow the whistle and get the red crew out. Yeah. You phone that right. I won't be home to dinner tonight. Give me a piece of that. You off this guy. Put the Olympian in the hole. <laughs> and it labor like that. It's made a hobo out of me. Can you imagine? On a day like this? The trouble with labor is the work that's connected with it. Now, I, I figured that work is for workers. So why bother your head about it? Hmm. Hey, Joe! Keep this one moving, will you? Well, uh, listen, Dan, we can't make it. We've got to send back for more men. What? Leave this large block another hour? Not on your life. Say, listen, there's not a man in ten miles. Karam, boys, Karam. Come on, come on. Mr. Thorne, I'm a conscientious objector to manual labor in any form. Get over there, get over there. I yield only to superior force. Come on. Well, how did I ever look you? Come on. Get over there and get to work. What makes you think I will? I got a couple of very good arguments for that. Listen, I work when I want to. And I don't want to now. No?
this way, over this way. Oh, Mr. Thorne, this is an extremely dangerous spot. Right here. Get over there. down there? Put him in the caboose and throw a feet into him. But then he's only a tramp. I don't know. There's something about that guy. Take him along. All right. Hey, a couple of you fellas come with me. Down and see you later. All right, Say, Dan. 
I was wondering if I could lay off on the next run. Why, Tom, you ain't put in for anything like that in 20 years. Well, you see, well, I... Oh, it's the wife. Ain't she no better yet? She's worse, Dan. Much worse. So you got everything you need? You got a good doctor? Yes, but... I'm just a little frightened, Dan. You go right back to her. And don't you let me see you around these yards, because she's absolutely all right. Thanks. Go on, go on. Hey, you know, Dan, if anything happens to Tom, he'll hit the booze again, sure. He knows better than that. Why, I'd have to rule him off the road. But you know what he used to be. That's right. Chuck, keep an eye on him. And if anything happens, let me know quick. You're, you're always thinking of me, ain't you? <laughs> sure, no man had a better daughter than I have. The birds will hear you. Yeah, it, it was, uh, look here, would you? The Donahue brothers are giving away a kitchen table and two chairs to every newly married couple this month. Now, that's something for you to look forward to. Well, that's quite an inducement, isn't it? It is. Uh, I must show this to Dan. Oh, don't you dare! Let, let, let go, let go! Why shouldn't I show it to him? He's a man that understands. Where, where is he? I haven't seen him today. What time is it? Oh! Well, they, uh, another minute you'd been late. Not a chance. You wouldn't think I'd be late with you waiting for me, Mary, would you? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna enter a complaint. Somebody's getting a lot of attention around here besides me. Sure, go on with you. You wouldn't be jealous of your own father, would you? <laughs> wouldn't I? Say, I'm likely to be jealous of anybody. What's that? Oh, yes. Say, Mary, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go down the roundhouse. I got a new man down there. He's a floater, and his name is Doyle. Give him this bundle and this note and see what he does, huh? Now, Dan, I wish you wouldn't bother your head about those tramps. You know, it never turns out right. Mary, a fellow can go wrong a dozen times. But if you're right once, it makes up for all the rest. Will you do it? Well, all right. Well, I got here just in time, didn't you I? Did that. I did it.
she's a lucky girl. I've often said that she's a lucky girl to be marrying a railroader and a fine-looking man, too. Hey, hey, stop throwing them apples. <laughs> Give me a match, will you? But you are, Dan. You are. Uh, maybe uh, not exactly handsome, but... No, uh, no. But handsome is as handsome does. <laughs> Not exactly handsome. Why, my tan looks like a street before they laid the pavement down. You wouldn't find Mary saying a thing oh. like that. No, oh, you're going to make a happy den. Never failed to do anything I want to do yet. You sure haven't, boy. You're always kingpin amongst us. Even in the old days. And ever since I got my smash, and you started to take care of Pipe me and down. Mary... Pipe down. Why, you're more than just a man to us. You... Hey, stop it. You, 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 you have me blushing. Maybe I didn't say the right words, boy, but... You know how I feel, don't you? You don't owe me a thing. If it had been the other way around, you'd have done the same thing to me. Sit still, lad. I'll see you with it. Yeah, this is the right place. Come on in. Well, how do you feel? Okay, here. Come and have a bite to eat. No, thanks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Meet Ed Ryan. We live here together. Ed, this is Larry Doyle. All right. Glad to meet you. You better put in some fuel. We just took off the load bag ourselves, but there's plenty of grub on the stove yet. And before you do that, maybe you better go upstairs and clean up a little. I left some clothes out for you. When you're decent, why, come right on down. Thanks. I guess I need him with that. Go on. It's, uh, to the left. Hilda! Yeah? Set another place on the table and keep supper hot on the stove, will you? Yeah, it will. All right. Is that the, uh, boomer engineer you were talking about? Yeah, that's the kid. You should have seen him talk back to me. Try to fight me and him two days away from his last square meal. He's a game kid. I know that kind. They wind up in a jail or a general manager's job. Yeah, in the jail most likely. I never saw one of those floaters yet that panned out right. Ain't you? No, I haven't. Well, you're looking at one right now. Say, if I hadn't got kicked in the pants by a couple of old rails like you, I'd have been a floater yet. That kid's gonna make a good hothead. Say, what's happened to Mary? Is she coming down? <laughs> She's upstairs pimping up for you. Of course, I'm glad to see you. 
Of course you're glad to see me. No, 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 Ed, I've got to get back to the shops. You tell Mary I'll see you later. Come yeah. on. Sugar and... All right. Oh, Hilda. See that the food in the plates is kept hot. Yeah, A.V.O. Hi, uh, where's Mr. Thorne? Uh, he's gone to the shops. Uh, sit down. Oh, thanks. I wanted to thank him for these clothes. They almost fit me. Uh, uh, sit, uh, sit down. Hilda will bring you in a bite to eat. Well, I ain't going to eat all alone, am I? Yeah, I guess you'll have to. Dan and I have had ours. Oh, here's Mary. She hasn't had her supper yet. Guess you thought I was never coming down. <laughs> Mr. Uh, uh, Doyle, Doyle. Uh, this is my girl, Mary. Oh, we've been introduced before. Once by Mr. Overhauls and again by Johnny Towell. <laughs> Sure, I said, she's my girl. <laughs> I should be saying, she's Dan Thorne's girl. She's going to marry Dan Thorne. Mrs. Thorne. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Lighthouse. Mr. Thorne is certainly absolutely out of time, I promise you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see if I can get him. Long distance, Mr. Thorne. Let him call me later. I can't talk to you right now. Call him later. I tell you, I'm not going to lay any more package on that spur. Now, get that. Now, I tell you, every egg will arrive there intact if I have to lay a new roadbed all the way from here to Chicago. Good part. Oh, Dan Thorne wants you over at the office. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, as soon as I wash up. What? Don't bother me! Imagine any man in his right mind taking up railroad as a business? No, sir. What? Uh, yes, sir. Who asked you anyway? Here, take this over to the roundhouse for me. No! Well, hello, Mary. Ain't this nice, you coming down here to see me? Dan, you forgot the handkerchiefs I laid out for you this huh? morning. Huh? So I did. See, that's thoughtful of you. It's all right, you know. It's all right. It makes me feel kind of close to you when I see you do little things like this. Oh, it's, it's nothing at all, Dan. You're the thoughtful one. Look what you've done for all of us. Oh, it's a pleasure to do things for you, Mary. I don't like to have you run around among these tracks, but you're the only thing that seems to brighten up this tough old railroad yard, and, and it sort of keeps me from going off my nuts sometimes. You know, I don't know if I could go through with it if I didn't look forward to seeing you. Hey, what do you guys think you're doing down there, playing ping pong? Two dishes by this company's meant to work with. I guess I don't need to tell you how I feel about you, Mary. Dan, I think you've been wonderful. You want to see me? Well, hello, kid. How are you? Yeah. 
I've got something for you. Come here. Read this. I had not to take this from you. Yeah. I want to be moving on. I don't think I'll ever be happy around here. <laughs> what do you mean, happy? You're going to stick here because I tell you, see? I guess you know what I want to say. Oh, no, well, don't say it. Hello, hello, Dan. Say, this is Chuck. Say, old Tom Johnson's wife died this morning. Yeah. He's on the loose. He's in that joint down by the lower yards. I did what I could, but after she passed away, I couldn't hold him. Okay, Dan. I'll keep it to myself. Mary, I'm sorry, I've got to believe you. I've got a tough call and Dan, I've got to Dan, you'll be go. back in time for the party tonight, won't you? Party? What party? The old-timers picnic. By golly, I forgot all about it. But I can't go anyway, Mary. Oh, you have to go, Dan. No, I can't. This is very important. I got it. You can go with Larry. No. No, I want to go with you. No, 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 no. Now, listen, Mary. This is very, very... Now, you haven't got much more time to dress. You better... And say, Larry, there you are. You can be celebrating your new rating and, and help me out at the same time, huh? And I'll, I'll try to drop in later. Huh? That's fine, that's fine. Well, so long, so long. I guess that settles it. I guess it does. Do you want to go with me? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please to the next feature on the program. That mighty spectacle presented by our own boys and on our own engine. A tug of war between two colossal moguls of the run.
I deserve, I guess. Oh, no, no, Larry, no. Now, Murray, get off the track. No, I won't leave you. Oh, please, Murray, get away. No, no I won't leave you. Stay here, Murray. No, please won't. go on away. No, get no, off no. the track, please. I, I won't. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Get it. Go ahead, Dan. It's all right. I got it coming to me. No! No, Dan! No! No, Dan! Doctor. It's bad. But, Doctor, you've got to save him. There must be something. Only a brain surgeon with complete modern equipment can help him. There's nothing like that this side of Chicago. He can't live more than five hours. But our fastest run to Chicago is seven hours. And we haven't got a through train on the schedule till this afternoon. The only chance to get him to Chicago in five hours. right now. 180. Put it up to 200. Okay. Oh, gee, it's tough. There must be something we can do. Not a thing. It's a six-hour record run. It can't be done. I can do it. What? 
I can do it. Why, don't you realize you couldn't keep that engine on the rails going 100 miles an hour all the way to Chicago? It can't be done. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Maybe it can. Put that in my special. Give it right away over everything. You bet. In that cab. Look here. This means sight-tracking everything on the way. The Olympian, the Pioneer, the whole timetable. Why, this will cost a fortune, and all for one man. For one man? You don't seem to understand. This isn't only Dan Thorne. It's every railroad man everywhere. Here. Hold everything east on the division. Get me wavered and hips on the wire at once. All right. Red board is far east as Markham City. All right. Hey, give me that. Give me that.
just a little longer, Dan. Just a little longer. This is the last time you'll ever ride this road. Uh, if it's any news to you, it's the last time I'll ever ride any road. Ah, uh, come on. that he'd come back here and die in his own division. That's a funny remark for Dan Thorne to make. I can't believe he wouldn't get well from anything if he wanted to. I guess that's the trouble. He just doesn't want to get well. You know what it is he wants. Dan, don't look at me like that. It's all right, Mary. It's all right. You don't understand, Dan. I've come back to you for always. I understand. 
I understand. No, Dan, no. I mean it. I'm never going to leave you again. The other was a mistake. Hello, kid. Thanks, Dan, for all you've done for me. For you. You didn't think I was going to see the limited wreck, did you? Flying oh. like this gives a man plenty of time to figure things out. I never had so much time before. You know, people have got to marry the things they love best. You two, each other. <laughs> Me, the railroad. Oh, I ain't kidding myself. Dan. Dan. bad about Dan's horn, ain't it? I hear he's all true. And he used to be a nice fella, too. Come on, get the lead out of your feet. Or I'll come out there and knock the can here for a row of gondolas. This ain't no smoking room, this is a railroad. <laughs> 